Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys a few effects that you can use to do dithering inside of GIMP. So as far as I've seen in the current version of GIMP, you will not find dithering in the default menu. So you can actually add dithering as a third party plugin. So the one we're going to use for that is called Gimmick, and you want the QT version. You can pick that up over on gimmick.eu slash download, and you'll come right down here to where it says Gimmick QT plugin for GIMP. 2.1 if you install that like normal using a .exe installer as the easiest way then the next time you boot GIMP you'll be able to go into the filters menu and you should see gimmick QT at the bottom down here so if we go into the filters menu and we go down to gimmick QT you just need to wait a minute for all of the filters to load currently 548 in total and then we can type in dithering and we get three options here that we can use so there's a classic type of dithering called the floyd steinberg algorithm and i think we can have something very similar to that inside of gimp if we go down here to the black and white dithering so if we click on dithering here then we're going to get something very similar to this. Of course, uh, this image that we pulled into GIMP is at a pretty high resolution here. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, though, you can see the dithering a lot more clearly. One setting you might want to consider increasing would be the contrast. So if you wanted to take these dark areas like the snout of the horse or the eyes and make them stand out a little bit more, you could increase the contrast, which is going to cause those to become fully black areas in some spots. So you can zoom out a uh, control middle mouse wheel to see how it's going to look. And then if you want to apply it to the underlying document, you just go ahead and hit apply on the bottom right of the effect. And then there you have your dithering. Of course, it's always easier to see when you actually zoom in here. So one thing you could do if you wanted the dithering to be more stand out would be to use a lower resolution on the image. So we could control Z to undo that and we can just scale the image down. So let's go to image scale image and then let's reduce it by a percentage. We'll make it 25% of the height and width but keeping the same ratio as before, hit scale. And now if we go back up to filters, give it QT, and we do the dithering this time, you can see how it is a lot more apparent. So I'll hit apply here. We look at our image and now the dithering effect ends up a lot more pronounced. Okay, so I'm going to control Z a couple times. We'll go back into the filters menu and let's show off the other two dithering effects that are in gimmick QT. So the next type of dithering is called posturized dithering, which is going to reduce the number of color tones in the image. It won't be black and white like this, but it is going to change the colors that get displayed. So if we click on posturized dithering, you can see here with the default mixer mode of color doping, we end up with a result like this. The colors are a lot less pronounced and, and shifted around a little bit as well. So the brown here kind of became more of a yellow. The white is still white. And we can hold down the middle mouse button and drag around this uh, preview window to see how it's going to affect everything, such as the tree over here. Now, there's actually other modes for this posturized dithering uh, effect. So we can go from mixer mode from color doping to darken. And the effect will be similar, but the color tones that are going to show are going to be completely different. So you may want to try a few different of these mixer modes and see if you get one that has an effect you like. So there is soft light. And we also have the third type of dithering called ordered dithering. So when we click onto it by default, the color doesn't change too much. So the color count here, you can see it's set to 16 colors. So it is a color reduction. And if you want it to go further than that, you can, of course, lower the color count down to six colors, four color dithering or two color dithering. But at the default color count of 16, it's mostly about the dithering method itself. It doesn't actually seem to change the color too much. But if we zoom in really closely, then you can see that the lines dithering method is quite different than the other uh, more classic dithering. So back in the black and white dithering, it does it with alternating dots. So you'll have the white dot and then a black dot and then a white dot and a black dot. And that gives you the original dithering effect. But with the lines here, you can kind of see them more as scan lines where the colors alternate. So you have kind of a light pink here and a dark pink and a light pink and a dark pink. So you still get a dithering effect, but the method it achieves it is different. And there's actually a bunch of other ones on the drop down list here as well. So we can try uh, checkerboard dithering and zoom in really closely. That's more similar to the uh, standard posturized dithering 
and the black and white dithering. And then dispersed dithering is really similar, except all of the dots seem to line up horizontally instead of being angled with the checkerboard. And we can try arcade out here, which appears to be very synth wave esque. I wonder how that would look if we lower the colors down to four. So let's actually keep the colors down there for a minute so we can see the effect be more pronounced. And let's go to ordered to try that out. And then matrix and random. So with all the methods, you do still end up with a dithering effect, but it is going to vary in how it looks depending on which option you go with. So once again, if you want to apply the effect after you're done previewing it, then you play around with the settings over here for any of the effects, you can go ahead and apply it. Let's hit the X button to close out of this. And then here is the image we end up with. So I can hit Control Z for a before the original image just taken by a camera and then redo with the gimmick QT effects. So if you were looking for a dithering effect to use with your images similar to this, then I hope taking a look at the effects in the Gimmick QT library helps you guys out when you're going to be working in GIMP. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.